All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over complex one of the electron transport chain. If you have not watched my last video on the complex one, two, three, and four overview, please go ahead and watch that before watching this video. Now, complex one is very simple. It's just many, many steps to it. And I wanna make it as easy as possible, as well as answer some of your dying questions that I think you may have. So let's begin. We're gonna start with NADH. Okay, now notice, the first thing to notice is this is not NADH plus H. This is normal NADH. This is coming from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, okay? Now, remember, glycolysis happens in the cytosol. We need to use the malate aspartate shuttle to get the NADH into the mitochondrial matrix, which is where, we're taking, where all this is taking place, okay? Now, since the Krebs cycle happens in the mitochondrial matrix, we're already here. So we don't have to do any transportation. It's just sitting here ready to be used. Now, here's what's going to happen. The NADH is going to shred off two electrons and basically attach it to FMN. And I want to explain what FMN is in a second. So two electrons are going to attach to FMN. In return, we're going to spit out as the NADH plus molecule, which will go into glycolysis and the Krebs cycle to be reused, and the hydrogen that's coming from here, okay? Now, let's talk about FMN. This is FMN. This is a flavin group. In fact, you can actually buy this. I didn't know this, but you could, I looked it up and I was like, you can actually buy like supplements of this. I don't know why you wouldn't do that, but you can. Anyways, I don't expect you, I don't actually, I don't expect your professors to expect you to memorize this molecule. That's, that would be hell, okay? That's crazy. But just know if you see these three rings with like a tail coming off the top of it, this is FMN or flavin mononucleotide. And here's what's going to happen. It has the ability to hold on to two electrons. So that's what's going to do. But here's the thing, is that when FMN, well, I should say, when electrons bind to FMN, to hold on. It's very unstable. So the way we stabilize that is with two protons. That's how we get FMNH2. So these, the double bond here and the double bond here will break, ascend kind of, and then essentially what we'll do is it'll attach here and here, and that's where the protons will attach to. Now you're probably wondering, where are these protons coming from? One of them is coming from the NADH right here, so this right here. The other one is actually, we have an invisible high proton here just sitting around. We have protons floating around all over the matrix of the mitochondria. One of them is going to come along and join itself onto FMN to become FMNH2. Okay? So now we have FMNH2. And what's going to happen is it's going to transfer its electrons to these iron sulfur clusters. Now, these iron sulfur clusters are good at one thing. They are good at transferring electrons really, 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 really fast, okay? Now these iron sulfur clusters is literally what it sounds like, is basically two iron molecules bonded to two sulfur molecules, okay? Or the other configuration is four iron molecules and four sulfur molecules. Okay, what it is, is yeah, basically they're just attached to each other, and when they're attached in a certain conformation, they're really good at holding electrons and transferring them. That's all you need to know. Okay? And now what's going to happen, it's going to bind to this area called N2. This is not nitrogen. It's not two nitrogen molecules. N2, as I know it looks very deceptive. But N2 is actually part of the sulfur cluster. It's at the inside portion of the sulfur cluster. And it's basically where it holds onto the electrons, to be more specific. That's basically what's happening. Okay? So it's not nitrogen. It's, a, in, it's literally an area, an area called N2 that's part of these clusters. It's, the, in, it's located in the center, and it holds onto these electrons. Okay? Now the important part. Ubiquinone, or complex Q, is going to come along and pick up those two electrons, okay? Now, complex Q, we went over it. It's an amazing electron carrier, okay? Now, here's the thing. When Q picks up the electrons, it's once again very unstable. 
So it needs protons to stabilize it. So two protons from the matrix are going to come along and help stabilize it, fully reducing ubiquinone to ubiquinol. Okay? Now, when it's fully reduced, something amazing happens. It basically supercharges complex one. Complex one is essentially a battery. Okay? Think about it as a battery. It's a huge battery located in the mitochondria. Now, when ubiquinone is fully reduced, it supercharges the battery. Okay? And when it gets supercharged, it has a lot of energy to help pump protons from the matrix to the inner membrane space. Okay? And in the last video, I mentioned the whole goal of this is to establish a proton gradient to power ATP synthase. Because ATP synthase, which we're going to get in, in later on, will basically generate ATP for a body to use. It's the energy factory. And the way that works is by pumping, uh, pumping protons into the intermembrane space. So when ubiquinone becomes fully reduced, it's able to supercharge complex one and shove protons to the intermembrane space to help establish that proton gradient to help make sure ATP synthase runs and we can actually generate ATP. Okay, that is complex one. Now, this the fully reduced form of ubiquinone is going to go to complex three later on. Okay, and that right there is complex one. Now, hopefully I answered your dying questions. And if, you, if I did, if I found, if you found this video helpful and useful, please like and subscribe. It'll, be, it'll mean a lot to me. The support has been crazy this past weeks. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for that. And until next time, later.